Hey y'all, uh, Matt here, and today we're going to talk about the Gospel of Matthew. Um, Matthew was uh, one of the two Gospels that were actually written by a disciple of Jesus, and uh, it's one of the most popular Gospels in the early church. It's one that they uh, held very high regard for. They had a lot of uh, teaching from it. It's probably one of the most cited Gospels uh, in the early church and by the early church fathers that we read now. Uh, Matthew is very special because it contains 45 parables and 13 of them are only found in the Gospel of Matthew. Um, as far as the author, we all know that the uh, author of the Gospel of Matthew is Matthew, but um, historically, none of the Gospels actually contained uh, any kind of author information. Um, that is something that was added later. When you see at the top of the, the book, the Gospel of blank, that is something that was added um, later on so that way they could attribute to who the church believed wrote that book um, The author in Matthew doesn't name himself inside the book, but um, a According to Matthew was written at the top of a lot of early manuscripts And uh, so that is why we one of the reasons why we believe that Matthew wrote the gospel of Matthew um, As far as the early church the early church always attributed it to Matthew. There's not really much controversy over uh, who actually wrote it and so um, we can rest assured that Matthew the disciple of Jesus actually wrote this book um, as far as who is Matthew who is the author of this book we know he's a disciple of Jesus but um, in Mark chapter 2 verse 14 we uh, hear that he's also called Levi so he has two names Matthew and Levi he's also known as Levi which this wasn't uncommon in this time period um, and uh, chapter 9 verse 9 we know Matthew was a tax collector and uh, this is also really important because a uh, tax collector there's a lot of baggage there that we don't necessarily understand because of our culture we don't we know who the IRS is but Matthew was in a completely different ball game he wasn't just a governmental organization but um, Matthew was actually a Jewish man who was seen by the people as a representative of the Roman government because he collected taxes on their behalf. And so uh, a lot of people would have labeled Matthew as a traitor. And so he's not the person that you would typically think that Jesus would want and call to be his disciple. Um, in addition to this, a lot of uh, tax collectors back in this day were also known as being really crooked. Um, they would take what what was owed to Caesar and then on top of that they would put their own portion and So they would uh, take advantage of the system and they take advantage of their own people And they would often become really really wealthy because they could uh, garnish all these extra monies from their own people um, like we said we know that uh, Matthew was Jewish and um, We know that uh, he probably had the Jewish background um, and but he was probably not super well liked by his own people because of this tax collector status um, He was, pro it was probably as you see when the Pharisees come and talk to Jesus and confront Jesus You see one of the things that they say is, you know, why are you eating with sinners and tax collectors? Like this isn't something that we do and um, So of course Jesus's ministry is countercultural, and he uses the people that we think can't be used but um, that's one of the amazing things about the Gospel of Matthew, knowing that Matthew wrote it. Um, as far as the date, um, there's a little bit of uh, controversy about the date due to uh, more modern um, studies of the actual text and uh, some of the stuff we've talked about, like the Synoptic Gospels. Um, the early church thought that Matthew was the oldest gospel, and that's why it's listed first in your Bible. They actually put... Um, most Bible, most books in the Bible aren't like this, but Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are put in what they thought was the chron chronological historical order that they were written. Um, more recent scholarship, as we talked about with the Synoptic Gospels, um, puts Mark in front of Matthew being written. And this is called Mark and Priority. Um, and this is basically uh, exactly what we talked about. They, they believe that Mark came about before Matthew because of this theory of the synoptic problem and that they believe that Matthew actually, Matthew and Luke actually used Mark's work in order to write their gospels. Um, this isn't anything to be concerned about. I know there were quite a few um, comments on the previous video about it. Um, as far as uh, Mark and you know the mark and priority and that theory 
Um, I don't know that we'll ever know uh, one way or the other, but know that this is something that wasn't commonly believed in the early church. Um, the early church thought that Matthew was one of the oldest gospels. Uh, it was held with really, really high regard. Uh, they quoted it all the time. And um, this isn't something that was actually uh, come up with this theory until uh, probably the 1900s. Um, and that was when they finally started studying the text in, in depth. And they came up with this idea, hey, you know, Matthew so similar to Mark, and it contains a lot of Mark. Maybe he used that as a source and then this Q document that we don't know about. But um, rest assured that, that Matthew is scripture. It's something that we can trust, uh, we can study, and it tells us about the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. Um, most people, um, because of this marking priority, this kind of affects dates, depending on what you think, um, when it was written. But typically, most people believe that Matthew was written sometime between the 50s and the 60s AD. So probably about 20 or 30 years after the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So it's really, really close historically. This, all of this information would have been fresh to Matthew as he wrote this gospel. And uh, a lot of witnesses would still be out there. They could uh, hear it. And uh, if anything was wrong, they would have been able to correct what he said that was wrong. And um, so it was, it was written really, really close to the death and resurrection of Jesus. So what is the actual purpose? We talked a little bit about how each gospel kind of has its own little um, unique uh, group that it was written to. But uh, what is Matthew's? What are some things to keep in mind as we read and study Matthew? Um, the number one thing is that, uh, you know, it was written with a kind of a Jewish influence. Um, it was basically written, a lot of scholars believe, to convince the Jews that Jesus was the Messiah that they were waiting for, that they, they saw the scriptures in the Old Testament talking about. You know, they read the Psalms and they heard David talking about, you know, his Lord that would come later on and that he would sit on the throne and uh so matthew is showing the jews that this is the messiah figure that they've been waiting on that jesus is this messiah he is their savior that the old testament talks about um matthew we say is written with a jewish influence because it quotes the old testament about 129 times so it, it basically assumes that you're very familiar with the old testament scriptures it has a lot of allusions back to the old testament and as readers that aren't so familiar with the Old Testament today, some of these can kind of be hard to miss as we read the scripture. Um, Matthew also puts a lot of emphasis on King Jesus because he is going to be a king. You know, he is uh, the, the lineage of David. He is the, the king to come after David, like we talked about that the scriptures pointed to. Um, he uses the son of David a lot for the, for, to refer to Christ, and this is the same reason why. Um, he was showing how, you know, Jesus as the son of David, you know, fulfilled these messianic expectations for the Jews. Um, and in doing this, uh, Matthew actually uses the word fulfill 15 times, showing how Jesus met this messianic expectation of the Jewish people. Um, and last, one of the things, if you read through Matthew, that you're going to really notice is that Jesus is constantly um, going up against the Jewish leaders, especially the Pharisees. Um, they're constantly coming up to him, asking him questions. They're constantly confronting him for what they think is, uh, in their legalistic eyes, uh, stuff that he shouldn't be doing. They constantly come say, hey, why are you sinning in this way? Why are you calling yourself God? And because of their legalism and their strict rules and uh, their obligation to follow these rules and focus on these rules and their own self-righteousness, their pride completely uh, blocked them from seeing who Jesus was. They completely missed him as the Messiah, as uh, as our Savior. And instead, they, they are the ones that helped push to crucify him. And so um, as we read the Gospel of Matthew, you can rest assured um, it was written pretty close after the death, resurrection of Jesus. It was written by the disciple Matthew. And it's got a lot of great information, especially uh, if you want to go back and look up all those Old Testament references as you read. But um, I love you guys. If you like this video, please uh, share it, subscribe to the channel, uh, hit the notify button so you get notified when I post a new video. And I'll see you on the next one. Love you guys. Blessings.